the approximation to ionization energies. This is actually a pretty exciting topic. You may recall from our previous lecture, or maybe two lectures ago, that the energy of an electron in a one electron system is given by the balmer rydberg equation. Uh, negative b times atomic number squared divided by the principal quantum number squared. Now, that particular equation, and this is only the absolute energy, which we didn't really care too much for, we looked for the changing energy, um, but this particular equation applies if and only if you have one electron and only one electron in your atom or ion. But if it so happens that you do have more than one electron, you now can really use this equation, but you can tweak it just a little bit to make it work out. And the way we're going to tweak it is by introducing the effective nuclear charge. So notice that I have this C star and N star. Uh, they both stand for the effective nuclear charge and the effective principal quantum number. Okay, so think of Z star as ZEF and N star as NEF. And I'm kind of abbreviating it that way because th this equation that I'm about to show you is um, a little bit on the lengthy side. Uh, but by introducing the effective nuclear charge and the principal, the effective principal quantum number, we have now allowed the Palmer Rydberg equation, which now I uh, can refer to as the Palmer Slater approximation, um, as a means of calculating ionization energies for multi-electron atoms. And once again, uh, the one thing you have to keep in mind is that the value of n star is not exactly equal to the value of n. It will be equal if you are from, from values of 1, 2 to 3, but for values greater than 3, the value of n star actually differs from the value of n itself. So just keep that in mind. Um, now, the other thing too is that this equation the balmer rydberg equation, or as written right now, the balmer slater approximation applies only to one electron, because after all, the rydberg balmer equation was only applicable to one electron systems. So now, we need to basically multiply all of the balmer slater approximation by the number of electrons present in the group in question. So if we have two electrons in the group, we'll multiply the two electrons by the value of negative V, times c star over n star square and we do that for you know as many groups as we need to do it the calculation for now still this is the absolute energy and as you have seen what really what we really are interested in is the changing energy so the changing energy for this is going to be equal to the final minus the initial states of the ionic species uh, so here we have the effective nuclear charge of the final species divided by the effective nuclear charge, the effective principal quantum number, excuse me, of the final species. We square that and we multiply by the number of electrons present in the group on the final species. And we subtract from that the very same terms, but now for the initial species. So this is a little bit on, you know, of a big formula, but it's the same thing as saying final minus initial. And the difference here is that we are now going to apply the equation to more than one electron. And that's the reason why we have to include the EF and the EI in the equations. Okay, this will be the changing energy per atom and per ion. And you could use it technically to look at changes in energy levels. But I personally am going to use it to calculate the ionization energies themselves. And I'm going to show you how to um, approach this problem. Okay, now... If we calculate the ionization energy, we have to keep in mind the definition of what ionization energy is. And the definition is that for whatever ionization energy we're looking at, whether it's the first, second, or the third, that will be the charge of the product. So the first ionization energy leads to element plus one. Second ionization energy leads to element plus two. And third ionization energy leads to element plus three, and so on and so forth. The reactant the direct reactant that leads to that cation product has a charge that is one less than the product so in the case of the first ionization energy the pro of oxygen the product will have to be oxygen plus one the reactant will have to be oxygen zero 
notice that there is only a difference of one in the charges of these two species. Now oxygen plus one is the product, so that's the final state. Oxygen with a charge of zero is the reactant, so that's the initial state. So what we need to do is calculate the effective nuclear charge for both the product and the reactant, and that's what I'm going to do. For um, regular oxygen, the configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, which once combined together becomes 2s2p6. Oxygen plus 1 will have one less electron, so we're looking at the 2s2p group with only five electrons. All right, now we apply Slater's rules the same way that we have before. All right, and we focus yet again on the valence electrons. In fact, what you need to focus on in particular are the groups that are changing. And the group that's changing for oxygen is the 2s2p group, because in one instance you have five electrons there, and the other instance you have six electrons. But notice that the 1s group has the same number of electrons, so you don't really focus on that. All right, now um, for the valence electrons, since we have five electrons for oxygen plus one, uh, four of them will be shielding the fifth one by 0.35 units. And the two electrons of the 1s orbital will shield by a factor of 0.85. The same case scenario happens for oxygen uh, with a neutral charge, except that now we have five electrons shielding the sixth one with a value of 0.35, and the two electrons of the 1s orbital shield with a factor of 0.85. The corresponding shielding, const shielding constants are 3.10 and 3.45. If we subtract the shielding constants from the atomic number of oxygen, which is 8, we get 8 minus 3.10, which is 4.9, and we also have 8 minus 3.45, which is 4.55. All right, so now that we have the effective nuclear charge, we can go ahead and enter the numbers into the equation. And the thing to remember is that the final number of electrons is the number is the electron count of the group for which you calculated the effective nuclear charge. In the case of O+, we calculated the effective nuclear charge for the 2s2p group, and we have five electrons there, so that will be the number 40 final. In the case of neutral oxygen, we calculated the effective nuclear charge for the 2s2p group, and there are six electrons there, so you will multiply um, the ratio in the Balmer constant by six. All right, so here is the actual equation um, in a much more simplistic manner. Um, I'm using the version of the Balmer constant in terms of kilojoules per mole. So instead of using 2.18 times 10 to negative 18 joules, I went ahead and used 13, 12 kilojoules per mole, which is the equivalent number. Uh, now, as I was saying, the number of electrons in the final state is five because that's what we have in the valence group used to calculate the effective nuclear charge. We multiply that by the effective nuclear charge, which is 4.90, divided by the effective principal quantum number. Since the group we use to calculate the effective nuclear charge is in energy level 2, the value of n star is also 2. Okay, so we, we divide 4.9 by 2, and then we square it. That gets multiplied by the number of electrons in the group, which is 5, and that's the final state. For the initial state, we have the effective nuclear charge of 4.55, which gets divided by two because the groups for which we calculate the effective nuclear charge reside in the second energy level. And for the second energy level, n star is also equal to two. So divide 4.55 by two, square it, and then multiply by six, which is the number of electrons in the group used to calculate the effective nuclear charge. Okay, now what I would recommend that you do is carry on the division first, square the number, multiply by five, and press enter in your calculator. Then, subtract from that, and I would recommend using parentheses for this, say 6 times parentheses, 4.55 divided by 2 square parentheses, and press enter, and that should give you the numbers. You could also alternatively write a number separately, in which case the final state will equal 30.0, and the initial state will equal 31.1. When you subtract those two numbers from each other, you will get negative 0.1 as the residual number, and if you multiply 13.12 by negative 0.1, um, actually you're going to get negative 1.1, excuse me, you will ultimately end up with positive 14.43 kilojoules per mole. Now the big idea right here is that the negatives that used to be in the equation at the very, you know, outside of the Balmer Slater approximation goes away because the subtraction here ends up being negative. Um, and the ionization energies 
every time they have to be a positive result if you get a negative value you made a mistake somewhere and you have to go and double check your answer now the one thing that i personally find amazing about this process is that technically speaking all that we have used aside from slater's rules is a periodic table the periodic table allows us to get the electronic configuration which then we use to calculate the effective nuclear charge and now with the balmer slater approximation we calculate the ionization energy and if you compare it to the experimental value of the first ionization energy of oxygen uh, what we see is that there is a percent error that is less than 10 percent and for such a simplistic approximation 10 percent error is not bad at all actually it's pretty decent so I, I think this is actually quite phenomenal and um, I'll be testing you in this regard because I, I consider this particular approximation rather useful and important so it'll be a good idea for you to get familiar with this process okay so we're going to finish the ionization energy at this point and in the next video we'll start talking about electron affinity